Hi team. It has recently come to my attention that most of you have only ever seen my art on YouTube, which means that you might not know that my art specialty is actually pencil portraits. So I thought for today's video, I'd go back to my roots and do a tutorial on how I go about doing pencil portraits, particularly those in non-natural skin tones. For today's video specifically, I'm going to be showing the process of this drawing. When I was first starting out, I watched a lot of walkthrough videos like this to help me understand how to do these. And so I'm hoping to return the favor and help someone else out. I've linked the reference I used for this in the description box below. So if you want to follow along, feel free to. And if not, I'm hoping to at least keep you company while you draw or do something as productive or not that's up to you so without further ado let's get into it okay so quick disclaimer um i don't do anything properly i haven't been to like art school or anything this is just how i do things and the first part of a drawing that i normally start with are the eyes um just because they're my favorite <laughs> i just i I just like how they look in a drawing and I like to get them right first because I feel like if they go right then the rest of the piece will go right. However, for this drawing, so I didn't forget, I wanted to do the reflection from the sunglasses onto the skin first. So that's what I'm going to do here with this red pencil um, because the sunglass lenses are red. For this piece, I'm using a mix between the Faber-Castell Polychromos and um, the Prismacolor color pencils. Um, I normally tend to mix them when I'm doing a piece. It's very rare that I just do them in one set of pencil just because I like how it looks. If I do then it's normally just the Prismacolor because they're technically like easier to get like a smooth finish because they're waxy. Anyway, just a tip if you do mix the two and do the same as I do. When layering the two, always go in with the polychromos first and then the Prismacolor. And this is because the polychromos are oil-based, but the Prismacolor are wax-based. So they go on a bit more opaque and they give a flatter wash of color, but you can't layer on top of them unless it's with another Prismacolor because of that waxy finish. Anyways, onto the eyes. It's proper form to start working on a drawing from left to right if you're right-handed um, and vice versa if you're left-handed especially with wet mediums. Um, so I really tried to do that here just so I could demonstrate something correctly. Uh, but I do normally jump around a lot while drawing and probably do later in the video. Another thing you might want to do is put a tissue under your hand, especially if you're just working in graphite. And that's just so the oils from your hand don't transfer onto the paper and smudge things around and all that kind of stuff, but I very obviously don't do that. I feel like it doesn't affect the look of a coloured pencil drawing as much. People might disagree with me, but I just... I, I'm lazy. <laughs> uh, so really it's up to you. In terms of colour choices for the eyes, I want to do her skin as like a blue colour, so I wanted something that would pop in comparison, which is why I chose like an orange yellow kind of tone for highs. I typically follow the structure of any normal iris and what I mean by that, like if you google what a iris looks like, or I'm sure you guys have seen eyes before, you'll notice that there's normally like a ring of colour around the pupil and a dark ring of colour around the iris itself. So for example, my eyes are like a blue-green and around my pupil I have like a yellow ring and around the iris itself it's like a dark blue ring. And so I try to mimic that kind of idea even when I'm using like colours that typically eyes or humans eyes aren't. And I kind of just build up the colour like that with whatever I think would look best and just emulate the idea of a real eye even though I don't actually work in realism. I tend to be more like semi-realistic. But yeah, this kind of little bit is very much up to how you feel and how you want to do the eyes. 
as a side note you might notice that i've also done the pupil itself in a dark blue i do make it black later but i try to use the color black very very sparingly and closer to the end of a piece especially if i'm going to be blending around it because i don't want to blend with black because black makes everything muddy when we wake hear the birds and see the sun side by side our fears are done all the good times just begun oh we know what we have let's hold on tight found what we're looking for in life because i don't like using black i shade the eyes and add some depth and dimension with a uh, purple and that's regardless of whether i'm doing like a more realistic color palette or not i just think it layers over whites and most colors like nicely to add depth like it darkens things up without making it muddy and i just think it works well i also go in with some pink around the edges because that's what exists in actual eyes and i like to be that a little bit and then a super dark blue around the parts where the shadows are darkest just to add some contrast and make everything pop. Hear the cricket, see the moon. Side by side and through and through. No limit to what we can do. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. And then I move on to do the same thing with the other eye. I don't put in eyelashes until I have done the skin because they are one of the few things that I do in black so I just ignore them. I don't even think I have eyelashes in this particular piece. I tend to actually forego lashes for the most part just as like a stylistic choice. So, but when I do add them, I add them last. We don't need no And once the eyes are done, I go in and do the eyeliner with a dark blue. Um, I eventually, once again, want them to be black, but I don't want the black to mix in with the skin um, and muddy it. And I haven't done the skin yet. All right. On to the bit I really want to talk about, the skin. Um, ignore what I'm doing with the colored brush pen. I was testing something new for this drawing. Basically, um, since I work on textured paper, the texture of the paper can show through if I don't layer the pencils enough. And I wanted to see if adding a wash of colour underneath it all would make all the colours seem uniform. The final consensus that I had after trying it though was that it didn't actually make a difference. So I stopped doing it eventually. Regardless, what I did want to talk about with skin in general and in non-human colours in particular is that you need to actually understand that skin isn't just one color or like different shades of one color, like different shades of beige or different shades of brown or whatever. It's layered with a bunch of different colors underneath. And the more you use that in your drawings, the more quote unquote realistic they'll look or just like the more depth and dimension you can get in it. And even if you're not going for realism, it adds some like interest to the piece. So like, for example, under the eyes, you have some purples, pinks, olives. Um, this probably isn't a good piece to demonstrate that because the glasses are covering her under eye area. And those kinds of tones exist even if you don't have dark circles because you have veins. And then on your cheeks, there's all those pink tones. A good exercise to do to like understand this kind of concept is to look at your reflection um, or look at other people's faces and see if you can pick out all those different colors and how they fit together on the face. Because like once you understand how all that looks to you, you can put it into practice. I tend to start with like if this is all new to you, doing 
more human skin tones first um, while learning because you can directly copy any photos you find on Pinterest or whatever and like see if you can emulate the kind of look of the skin based on all the colors you see there. The girl in the reference image I've linked in the description has a pale skin tone so you can practice how you'd lay down the color for that if you want to before moving on to doing anything with like blues, purples, pinks, oranges, whatever. Or if you really want to skip that. The basic idea and premise of it is like translatable into non-human skin tones. It's just that you have to think a little bit more of how you want to lay the colors and what colors you want to shine through and whether or not you're going to keep like the traditional purples, pinks, olives, whatever, where they're supposed to be before you layer the skin color over the top. But otherwise, it's genuinely the same principle. What I normally do is I first do a light layer of whatever color it is that I want the skin to be. Here I did it with a pen because I was testing something. It's whatever. And then I go in and put down the underpainting. I know I'm not painting, but I don't know what else to call it. Like when I put down where I want all the colors that I want to shine through the skin first, those purples and stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm calling it, the underpainting. I use pinks where I want the face to look more flushed and purples, blues, etc. for shadows. Um, and then I go over it with a light shade of blue to build up the color and see and like get an idea of how the skin is going to look. And then I keep alternating with that process until I'm happy with the pigmentation and depth. Like, I know it may look weird at first, but you really need to trust the process. Typically, I wait until the end of a section to add in white. I just leave the bits I want lighter with the shading. Um, but I was having trouble seeing the contrast here in this piece, so I went in early just for visualization's sake, though this is a good time to mention that the white Prismacolor pencil is without a doubt the best white ever. No, no, no. Don't worry about the cold. And when we've reached a level of blending I'm happy with, I'll add in the black for the eyeliner. Um, I'm going to be spinning the paper around a little bit in a sec because it helps me get a good angle for my arm to colour with my camera set up. Um, I try really hard to keep my hand from blocking everything, but that's not always possible. But yeah, sorry if the spinning bothers any of you. I when I say And now you're going to see me jump over to the other eye and ignore everything I just said about going in with a black first. Sorry. <laughs> I, like I said, I never do anything correctly. I just want you to know the correct thing, way. Well, it's not even correct. That's not the right word, but I mean like the more logical way to do things. But like I said, because I like to bounce around while coloring, um, yeah, I just, I just do as I please. As long as you're conscious and you know that you have black in certain places, you'll be fine. And now we're going to colour the rest of the face with the same layering technique as I used for the skin around the eye. Going in with purples, pinks, blues first, layering the skin tone over, and repeat until we're happy. I've let myself get away with not having as smooth of a finish on the skin under the glasses because we're going over that later. I 
After about an hour of layering and blending, this is where we're at. So not even halfway. We just have to keep pushing and trust the process. <laughs> push through I of course mean get sick of the skin and take a break by working on the lips. The basic process behind these are the same as literally everything else, we're just layering and blending to our heart's content. I don't really have any specific tips or a process to offer with this one, I just do as I please. Um, if I was going to give some guidance it would be that it's easier to start light and work your way up from there but otherwise the lips aren't too interesting and I just see them as something to get done before I can do all the more exciting stuff. <laughs> the rest of the skin. I don't really have any tips for how I pick what colours to place where because I always use reference so I look to the reference and see where it has its pinks, purples, etc. where it places its shadows. Um, it's all about practice really <laughs> and then you can start making your own creative choices with it once you understand where everything goes roughly. So I don't always follow the reference to a T I just kind of look at it to get an idea of where everything is and then I work with that. Driving down the road that I grew up on once again It's when I pass your door the memory come back again pictures of us flooding back just like a wave makes me wonder what happened what you're up to today remember when we stole your mother's car we drove for days teenagers with too many feelings and rage we were higher than the ceiling, middle fingers to the sky. I remember thinking if I only could stop the time. Way back when we did. And here we have the face mostly done. Um, I might go back in later and work on smoothing things over a bit more, but otherwise I can now work on other bits. My camera stopped filming for a bit, so now we're here. Uh, basically what I did for the glasses lenses um, is use an Ohuhu marker to colour them in. 
they're alcohol based so really any alcohol based marker would work and because they're transparent enough to let all that work we did on the skin shine through while still looking like there's like red a wash of red over everything i feel like it really really emulates the idea of glasses lenses um this was actually my first time trying this i wanted to see if it would work just on a whim um when i zoom out you can see that i did do a test on a scrap piece of paper to see if it would actually lay down over the pencil but otherwise i had no idea how it was going to turn out um and i'm actually quite proud of it considering that it was just yeah just a whim <laughs> sometimes you need to take a risk and now we're back to doing the skin on the body Stop the time right now we back when we didn't care what they said people could stare i didn't give a damn cuz i was being next to you way back when we didn't care what they said people could stare i didn't give a damn cuz all i need my friend way back when way back when we were higher than the there we go skin finished now just the top and her glasses and this is finally starting to look good art always looks bad before it looks good so just trust the process um please don't take a shot every time i've said that it's it's getting sad um but like it really is. You just have to remember that it will look good. You just need to get there. Solo un rayo del sol cambia el tiempo en el reloj. Hoy mis deudas reciben perdón. Pago por el show. Me siento feliz porque si no soy yo, pues quién? Todos caen a mi lado. Now that all that is finished, we can get to my favorite part, the hair. Um, I'm super keen to show you guys this process because I think it actually turned out quite well. I wanted the hair to be black, but I didn't want it to be just like a big black splotch on the page. Like I said, I like to use black sparingly, even when I'm doing an area that's supposed to be black. So what I did um, is give it some funky colored highlights. The idea for this is the same as what they do with blue highlights for characters with black hair in TV shows. Like I'm sure you've noticed that whenever a character has black or like really dark hair, they tend to add bits of blue to it um, just to add some dimension and depth. Um, and I do this when I do black hair, but I also do it with just any color I want, blue, green, red, purple, pink, like I'm doing here, the possibilities are endless. So what you're gonna do is grab a super light color, a mid-toned version of that color, a dark version of that color, and black. Here I'm using three purpley pinks and a black. So first I go in with the lightest color and then I place it down wherever the light first hits because it is going to be the lightest part of the hair. And as I move out away from the color, I blend it into the darker colors. I'm effectively going for a bit of a gradient, but always remembering the direction of the hair and following that, like everything needs to go in one direction <laughs> so that you can, it looks like hair falling, not just like a colored mess. And once I've built it up enough, I go in with black around the edges. Um, it's actually really simple, but super effective. And then after all that blending is done, I go in with a very fine black pencil and draw individual like little strands all over the chunk of hair just to give it some more dimension and to look realistic. And then I repeat it all over the head always remembering the direction of whatever chunk of hair I'm working on. I've been thinking of how to leave you Just to leave you
we have it. It's a lot of work, but I do think the end result is really worth it. All right. And then I decided I wanted the glasses lenses to look like they're reflecting a fire, just because I thought it would add a fun little bit of flair to the piece. So I went in with some yellow and orange and red and, you know, typical fire colors and just made a rough fire-like shape um, to get that effect. Uh, this next bit isn't necessary, uh, just a fun thing I bought a little while ago and thought it would help with adding a bit of oomph to the glasses. So while layering down those pencil colors, I thought some of it wasn't as opaque as I wanted it to be, especially some of the yellow, because I really wanted it to look like something bright was glinting off of them. So what this thing I'm brushing on the glasses is, is a medium called Colored Pencil Touch Up Texture. It's by a brand called Brush and Pencil. Um, I just got it online, it's very easy to find on there. And what it does is add more texture and grip to your paper, um, so you can keep adding pencil layers on top of older ones. Um, it's typically for if you've layered so much onto your paper that you've worn out the grip and you can't layer any more on top. But I kind of use it like that, but also if I want the pencil I'm placing on top to seem more opaque because it adds more grip, the pencil will look more pigmented. So I've just set it down and let it dry so I can build up the fire reflection later. Um, then I finally decided what colour I want to do the choker, so I coloured that in. And last but not least, the horns. I didn't know what colour to do them, so after some deliberation I went in with yellow to match her eyes. I know typically people do them as red, but I thought it wouldn't stand out as much when next to her pink hair, well pink, well black hair really, but all the pink in her hair, it's really close to the horns and I just thought they wouldn't pop as much as I'd want to if I did them in red. And there we have it, all ready for the last little bit. Um, this is where I normally go in with an opaque white pen and add in the pure highlights, like the white white highlights. Before I did do that, just because I forgot until it came up on the screen, um, I did spray the entire thing uh, with this matte varnish. Firstly, because I think colours always pop more after you varnish them, um, and I wanted to see what the pencil was looking like. And also because, like I said earlier, Prismacolors are waxy, so they're very shiny, um, and this dulls that shininess to them while leaving the colour and really letting the colour shine through. these Clearo ones, they're super reflective and beautiful. They just have a bit of a learning curve to them since you can't just use it straight out of the pan with a wet brush. Instead, you have to add some water and leave it so that the pigment loosens up a bit. I'm pretty sure they have that instruction on the packaging for it, but just in case. Anyway, after that, the end result is beautiful. Here you can see me remember in real time that uh, you can't layer watercolour over waxy Prismacolor. It's like trying to mix oil and water. Um, so <laughs> to remedy that, I went in with that pencil touch up again. I actually put it on the screen this time so you can actually see it. Um, and once it dries, I paint over it. Easy fix. And there we have it, um, after about five hours of work. <laughs> I'm actually super proud of her. I don't think my camera does it justice, but anyway, um, thank you for watching. I had a lot of fun doing this drawing, and I hoped it helped someone even a little bit, or at the very least, kept you entertained. Um, if you drew along with me, please comment down below what you did, and feel free to tag me on my Instagram if you want to show me 
I, I like seeing other people's art. Um, yeah, if you didn't draw along, tell me what you did anyway, because I'm nosy. Otherwise, please do all the YouTube things like liking and subscribing. I'm getting very close to 1000 subscribers and I really want the community tab. <laughs> Regardless, I hope you all stay safe and treat yourselves kindly. Bye team.